Hey guys, alright? Welcome everyone. A knight is fleeing through the forest from men who want him dead and also seek to capture the boy with him. They shoot arrows at him, narrowly missing. The man, realizing they have no chance of escape and survival, quickly throws the boy into the forest so at least he can escape certain death, while he draws the others away, only to meet a tragic end further ahead when he encounters many warriors waiting on the path to capture the boy, whom they see in order to shoot arrows to kill him. The next day, a group of people passing through the same path of pursuit, a man finds the boy who managed to escape named Tien. We discover that this man is a slave trader and quickly captures the young man and takes him away. When Tien arrives at the village, he is forcefully pulled from the wagon and, in fear, kicks the men to let him go. Attempting to escape, one of the crazed men steps in front of him, making him fall to the ground, then orders him to be thrown into a chamber where he is bathed in animal blood. Tien is taken to an arena, where the leader of those cruel men declares that he is the next to fight. Not wanting to, Tien hits the eye of the menacing man with a stone, who, in anger, throws him into the water-filled arena. Not knowing what awaits him there, Tien fears what might come when he sees something moving underwater and hits it with a wooden spear, but to no avail, as it is a crocodile that attacks him and now he must fight for his life while the beastly men rejoice over this terrifying moment for Tien. As he tries to escape, he is knocked down by the man who threw him there. However, a man known as Chernang, leader of the Cliff Bandits, who was present, begins to attack the natives with his men while Tien struggles not to be devoured by the crocodile. Chernang throws a spear at their leader, killing him. His fellow warriors also emerge and attack the others, defeating everyone in the place, though many manage to flee. Tien, still in danger of death, is helped by Chernang who gives him a knife to try and defeat the beast. After a fight with the animal, Tien bravely manages to defeat the beast, which excites Chernang and his group of warriors known as Wing of Garuda. Afterwards, waking up, Tien realizes he is in a different place and soon sees an elderly man who is Chernang's master. He asks if the boy Tien is really the one they were looking for. Approaching the master, after touching him, he states that not even the spirits dare challenge the power of Tien's hands which in combat can conquer the entire world. Seeing Tien's potential, Chernang invites him to stay and train in martial arts, but it is not obligatory. Tien then leaves, and walking through the village encounters the local people and the men of Chernang's group, who train and showcase their skills. Seeing a bright future for himself there, the boy Tien is inspired and decides to stay and learn everything within his reach from the master of martial and illusory arts. After officially becoming a member of the Mountain Bandits and now an adult, Tien goes out to train and participate in the beginning of his final tests, where he jumps over elephants, and if he falls, he will be crushed. When he reaches the leader of the herd, he is knocked down and confronted by him, but Tien, not accepting this, attacks him again and, jumping onto its head, commands the elephant to sit, thereby gaining respect and moral authority over the herd. After this test and being approved, it's time for him to show what he learned in martial arts, where his opponent has no time to react to his attacks. We see that with swords, he has excellent mastery, and even in direct attacks, he defends himself very well and counterattacks with great skill. He then moves to hand-to-hand -hand combat, where his legs are put to the test, then Tian's hands prove to excel in a balanced fight, where with strong, secure, and well-executed strikes, Tian defeats his opponent. Now facing his third adversary, Tian must confront a brutal fighter, turning it into a more difficult test, which this time Tian finds harder to win. Even delivering surprise, deadly, and unexpected blows as a form of attack, they have no effect due to the brutality of his opponent. However, in a moment of carelessness, Tian finds an opening and applies an arm lock, making his opponent surrender. In his final test, Tian goes to a cave, where he must test the resistance and strength of his spirit. As he walks, he hears cries for help and soon finds a woman asking for help. But when he helps her, he is surprised, as she attacks him and acts like a beast, as if possessed by an evil spirit. The witch fights fiercely against Tien to kill him, but being a great fighter, he is about to hit her with an elbow to the head, but thinking it's a test, he hesitates to finish the fight, so the beast continues the attack. Chernang arrives and warns him that, as before, his life is in his hands, then throws a knife that the witch catches and attacks him, nearly hitting him, 
but Tian dodges and ends the fight. After everything and all the tests, Tian becomes the black prey and commander of the mountain bandits. Days later, a group of men passes by the road and are surprised by Tian and his warriors, jumping from trees and emerging from the river, destroying their means of transport and killing them all, where Tian alone defeats several. In the end, he sees an idol of the men and remembers something. Later, Tian has a memory of his parents Sihadeko, one of the four generals of the kingdom, and his wife Lady Play. They go to Master Bua and talk a little. Sita Deko tells Bua that things in the capital are in chaos, so the prince sent him to command the troops and take care of the protected territories, as the real commander Lord Rajasena opposes the prince, hence the reason for so much chaos. Fearing the worst for Tien, his parents ask Bua to take care of him, and he does so. The next day, he meets a girl named Pim, who says she is an orphan and that Master Bua raised her from a baby. Tien tells her he wanted to learn martial arts, but his father wanted him to learn the art of dance. One day they meet a man named Hen, who was a little off, seeing a bracelet he was fiddling with, Tien decides to make a plan to get it, where he dances and makes Hen repeat everything he does, so he throws a flower necklace and Hen does the same, when he turns around he doesn't find Tien, as he took advantage of his stupidity to take the bracelet and give it to Pim. Speaking with Master Bua, Tien says he chose to study martial arts weapons to help people and destroy the tyranny that plagues the people, thus bringing peace. Returning to the present time, in the forest, the same group of lunatics who captured Tien at the beginning and forced him to fight a crocodile is now with other prisoners, where the same guy who threw Tien into the arena as a child is now advertising one of his new slaves and abusing her while her son cries desperately for his mother. The lunatic is hit on the head by a clay pot and becomes furious. He starts hitting everyone, asking who did it, when he grabs one of the people there and breaks another pot on his head. Enraged, he begins to force the person to drink heavily, but is caught off guard when the one who threw the pot overpowers him with a throat strike. We soon see it as Tien who knocks the lunatic out by throwing him forcefully against several pots. Seemingly drunk, he fights with the others who attack him. Even intoxicated, his skills are still alive and effective, as he uses movements and strikes even from the ground, knocking them all down. Suddenly, the lunatic returns with a torn mouth and attacks Tien, who effortlessly unbalances him and lands an elbow strike in the middle of his chest, defeating him once and for all. Other men come to fight him, but, scared, they hesitate to approach Tien, when they are pushed to fight with him. The men stand no chance against Tien, who, mastering various fighting styles, uses his hands in fatal neck strikes. Tien attacks the men firmly, using his elbows and knees as lethal weapons. He then goes to one of the leaders and after a few strikes, finishes him with a knee to the face, throwing him into a pot of hot water. His group arrives and subdues everyone there. The still-living lunatic, seeing no escape, begs for his life to be spared, but Tien orders him to be taken to the crocodiles, just as he had done to him when he was younger. Tien then orders the release of all the slaves. At night, while everyone celebrates, Tien thinks of the farewell he had to have with Pim, where she doesn't want him to leave, but having to depart, he says he will return one day and then leaves with his rider, but not before giving her the bracelet he took from Hen. On the way, they are stopped by a man who looks like he just fought, questioning where the man is taking young Tien, as the direction is different. We discover that the man who took Tien is actually a traitor, then being threatened with a sword, Tien stands still. The man in front of them is a loyal servant of Siha Deko, Tien's father, who signals the boy and attacks, and Tien, noticing him coming, headbutts him under the chin, unbalancing him. The servant of his father attacks him with his sword, making the man fall off the horse, then tells Tien to flee. In a sword fight, Tien's helper is pressured but manages to defeat the traitor. Back in the village, Rajasena's men have burned everything and killed almost everyone, and they have Siha Deko surrounded. Hearing his wife scream, he decides to attack them, but is hit by an arrow from Lord Rajasena. Tien returning sees the scene of his mother going to his father and unfortunately dying from an arrow in the chest also from the tyrant Rajasena. Tien is about to scream, but his father's servant arrives and prevents him from being noticed. Furious at the death of his wife, Sihadeko attacks, but is killed by Rajasena's assassin. 
Tian, desperate, manages to scream for his father, but now being noticed, must flee and save his life. We then remember the scene from the beginning of the film, where, unfortunately, he loses his father's servant and has his fate sealed, becoming who he is today. Returning to meet with the king of the bandits, he shows fury in his eyes, and knowing what Tian went through, Chernang says he will name him as his successor that night, but first he must do what he longs for, avenge the people who destroyed his family, otherwise, he could not be a good leader. Decided, Tian leaves and rides towards the capital to go after Raja Sena. At night, sitting on his throne and starting the inauguration ceremony in tribute to an image he claims to be divine. When then a beautiful woman enters the scene with other dancers, which soon attracts Regicina's attention to her. And here we realize it's Pim because she wears the same bracelet Tien gave her when she was younger. Moments later, a masked dancer enters the scene and performs some dance steps mixed with martial arts very well, but Rajasena has no interest, as he is fixated on Pim and desiring her. Noticing Rajasena distracted, the dancer makes very fast movements and throws explosive bombs, causing a commotion and then attacks the guards, eliminating all of them, until reaching Rajasena who stands little chance. He strikes Rajasena and says it's for his mother, then he removes the mask and we discover it's Tien, seeking revenge for the death of his parents, there to eliminate Rajasena. With this, young Pim recognizes Tien and is surprised. Tien has the chance to strike Rajasena several times but fails to kill him, as guards arrive and fight him, but Tien does not allow the tyrant to escape. Tien once again uses the art of illusion with bombs and thus confuses the guards who kill another person thinking it's him, while Tien finishes Rajasena. Then he looks at the beautiful Pim and not recognizing her, leaves. Returning to the mountain bandit village, he finds no one but a masked person is there. When Tian turns to see who it is, he finds out that it is his father's killer and Rajasena's servant, which enrages him as now your revenge will happen. Then a sword fight begins, and we see the two are very skilled in handling the weapon. Tian tries to hit him, but the ninja assassin defends well. Tian uses everything he can to end the man, and at one point he knocks the ninja down and seizes a moment to lure him in and then finishes him off with a fatal blow to his neck. Tian realizes it wasn't just one, and the previous one wasn't his father's assassin, when more men appear and attack him without delay. Tian fiercely fights against them and defeats them, but more and more men appear, and in a continuous fight with more of them arriving, Tian overcomes and defeats each one who comes in front of him. Realizing that the house will explode he runs from there and jumps far to escape the explosion. Going to the possible assassin of his father, he encounters more ninjas fighting with their sharp blades to eliminate Tien, who, however, with great skill and resilience, manages to dodge all of their fierce attacks and defeats them all as well. Then another, seemingly more skilled than the others, makes Tien climb onto a platform, when another arrives and they surround him. Tien firmly faces them in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and with a beautiful combination of strikes with hands and feet, putting into practice all he learned in his training, he delivers disorienting blows to one of them, leaving him disoriented on the ground, and Tien uses him to propel his next strike against the other coming at him, giving him a brutal knee to the face. However, his opponents are tough to defeat and come back to face him, but with an unusual resistance, Tien applies his deadly blows to each one, thus finally defeating them. But he gets no rest because the other masked one who was watching the fight now attacks Tien, who is already tired. Tien receives a side cut and falls wounded, but that's not the worst, as other ninjas wait for him to get up and one of them hits him with a heavy blow to the face. Then Tien, not giving up, throws San in his wounds and returns to the fight with a large nunchaku, managing to knock down some of them with maneuvers made together with the weapon. Full of fury, he starts using his sword and with great speed and skill, mercilessly attacks and eliminates several ninjas, then starts using a kunai tied to a rope, or incredibly he defeats the rest. But it's not over yet, as Tien sees more ninjas coming, when an elephant arrives and protects him by standing in front of him. But this does not stop them, and then Tien fights again, but now with the help of his friend as protection and means of attack. Tien, tirelessly, manages to defeat each one of them, the last one receiving a tremendous knee directly to the head, combined with the force of a somersault in the air. However, the ninjas keep coming and then Tien climbs the elephant, when then a creature emerges behind him, actually another ninja, 
but a fearsome one who immediately attacks him. Tien uses all his strength to defeat the ninja who seems to have superhuman powers, but unfortunately, Tien is badly wounded and vulnerable to his attacks, which finally brutally knock him off the elephant. Tien, with a warrior's soul, stands up and manages to fight again, but as he is about to attack the masked man, he is interrupted by a soldier of Rajasena, who arrives with other soldiers, showing that he is still alive and they have taken over the entire place. He reveals how he survived, wearing a type of vest that allowed him to withstand all of Tien's attacks, leaving Tien very surprised and frustrated. Rajasena then says that there is someone who wants to kill him and he doesn't need to use his soldiers. It turns out to be his master and friend Chernang, whom Tien regards as a father. We understand that Chernang owed Rajasena, and because of this debt, he had to kill Tien's father and now must kill Tien to spare his own people. Chernang starts the fight, not wanting to kill Tien as he sees him as a son. Tien, angry and thinking it was on purpose, attacks him with everything, but being very weak, he fails. Chernang attacks him to prove that he would do what Rajasena wanted, and with their swords crossed and pushing against Tien, Chernang tearfully says goodbye, expressing his love for Tien as a son and stating he would pay for Tien's father's life with his own. Tien realizes that he too was a victim of the tyrant lord Rajasena. Accepting Tien's vengeance, his foster father and the killer of his biological father decides to end the fight by breaking the sword, causing Tien's sword to cut his neck. Tien is devastated and hopeless, remaining on the ground, then Rajasena orders him to be tortured for a long time until the end of his life. Sometime later, we see Tien, who is imprisoned in one of those medieval torture devices, where his movements are restricted and he is also drugged. The soldiers of Emperor Rajasena throw water on him and then announce his sentence at that location, calling him a rebel against the emperor. The tyrant Rajasena is just observing, and the order for Tien's execution is given, which consists of beating him until he is no longer breathing. The wood that restrained him is removed, leaving him only chained at the feet and hands. The men begin the execution and he is severely beaten. At a certain moment, he is lifted with sticks and the emperor says that he will join his father in hell. With this, Tien becomes enraged and uses the last of his strength to start fighting against those men. Unfortunately, it's not his full strength, but wait, much more is to come. He defends himself using the chains on his feet and, when standing up, uses the chains on his hands as a weapon. Even with his leg movements restricted, Tien does very well against those men and ends up taking one of their sticks. He fights fiercely with great skill and incredible resilience against so many baton blows. But his fury lasts only a short time due to already being very weak and all that he has gone through before, where finally more and more soldiers of the tyrant emperor arrive, and thus Tien is overpowered. In a small village far away, we see that Master Bua, who had taken care of Tien when he was very young, is alive with several other villagers, including Men, a man with an apparent mental disorder. Meanwhile, Tien still suffers the severe punishments ordered by the tyrant Rajasena. While Master Bua performs his meditations and prayers for the land which apparently was suffering due to a curse and evil forces, he then has visions of a person practicing black magic trying to invade his body. However, very experienced in the art of meditation, Master Bua expels all the magic from within him, then shaves his head and goes to the mountain to worship his deity. Meanwhile, Rajasena starts hearing voices saying he will have a terrible fate, which disturbs him. He then has a vision of the day of the ceremony in which the former emperor made to seal his faithful subjects under the oath made before all the gods, also of the same person we saw practicing black magic and entering Master Bua's body. The former emperor then says that whoever betrays him would have their life cursed. We see Rajasena and another traitorous servant of his planning to kill the emperor, who, drinking poison wine, starts to feel ill, discovering too late that it was Rajasena, curses him, and dies. Realizing that everything around him was destroyed, Rajasena wakes up from his nightmare and hears noises coming from outside, soon discovering that they are the mountain bandit warriors, whom Tien regarded as friends and was their successor leader. One of them tries to release Tien but is stopped by the black magic practitioner who is then attacked, but it doesn't work, as he uses his occult powers and quickly kills all of them. Rajasena arrives and congratulates the wizard for his skills, then offers many things for him to serve him, 
but the wizard has no desire for anything more. Then, giving gold to him, Rajasena says that even if he is not alive, he could not refuse or bargain with the king. However, he discovers that the wizard knows about his dreams and all the curses that are coming to him, saying that the reason is Tien, then saying that he knows how to undo this but must go to him. After saying this, the wizard leaves the place and Rajasena, worried, says he will kill Tien. The next day in the village, the beautiful Pim discovers that Tien will be executed at noon. In the arena of Rajasena's palace, Rajasena orders the execution, but before Tien is beheaded, a royal messenger brings a royal decree from the king of the entire empire, saying he must take the prisoner with him. After Tien is freed from the hands of Rajasena, who is now enraged by deducing that there is a traitor among them, he has more visions that leave him hallucinating and seeing crows over him. Tien is taken to the same village as Master Bua, where healers are tasked with curing him. Upon arriving, Pim, suspecting it might be her old friend, goes to look and discovers it is Tien, who is gravely injured. Not long after, the village is attacked by Rajasena's ninjas who came to kill Tien. Seeing this, Pim tries to take him to a safe place. Meanwhile, the skilled ninjas kill all the guards who were to take Tien to the king, and as one of them goes after Tien, he is struck by a stunning blow with a stick, but he quickly gets up to fulfill his mission. He heads towards Tien, but the king's warriors hit him in the neck with a stick. However, he also manages to defeat the two warriors. Trying to reach Tien again, he soon dies, as his neck is sliced with a bamboo stick. Moments later, Master Bua tends to Tien's wounds and tells Pim that there is little hope, but Tien must go through all this. Master Bua says that everyone must unite and build a symbol so that Tien's soul can return to his body. The next morning, everyone disposes of some of their possessions, including Han and Pim, who placed the necklace that Tien gave her when they were younger. After constructing the statue from the objects, they remove the cloth wrapped around Tien, revealing his body has recovered well. Days later, he awakens, relieving and delighting everyone. One night, a weakened Tien decides to go to the edge of a cliff. Struggling with his still recovering bones, Tien tries to gather the strength to stand again, but now sees himself as useless and contemplates harming himself. Mhen appears beside him and questions what he is doing. Tien, hopeless and wishing to die, tells Mhen to leave, making Mhen sad. Seeing Tien determined to jump, Mhen says he will do the same and approaches the cliff edge. Realizing it's too high, he decides to return and tells Tien to do the same, but Tien tells him to leave him alone. Disturbed, Mhen changes his mind and starts urging Tien to jump. Master Bua arrives and tells them that even Han realizes what he's doing and the consequences it can have on his life. A saddened Tien says that even though he's alive, what's the point? Master Bua says that the mission Tien has to do is the reason he suffers so much. Tien questions what mission he can do, as he can barely move. Wisely, Master Bua tells him that Tien means candlelight, and from now on, he must look forward and never back. Following his master's advice, Tien goes to a temple to be alone and meditate, seeking strength. After some time, he starts to set his bones right and stands again as a new man. Days later, Tien returns to training, and Hen, his new friend, brings Pim for them to talk a bit, making him very happy. Together, they practice the art of dance, where Tien, with difficulty, performs the movements. Mhen watches and dances too, soon noticing that Tien and Pim form an eternal bond of friendship. Later, talking to his master, he says that through the art of dance, he learned to control his body, and through meditation, to control his mind. He thanks Bua, who tells him that there are many evils in the world, and each must be punished accordingly. To deal with his weaknesses, the master tells him to train, as afterward, his spirit would be refined and purified. Meanwhile, the disturbed Rajasena, having no hope of staying sane from his hallucinations, decides to go to the wizard, who immediately invites him in. Inside the wizard's lair, filled with skulls and bones, a chilling place, Rajasena meets him and is disturbed by visions of the past and the real reason he is going mad. He tries to kill the wizard, but it's futile, and he is thrown out. Enraged by such an affront, Rajasena orders the guards to attack the wizard, who, being very skilled, easily defeats many soldiers with a fighting style very similar to Tien's. The wizard dodges swords and, with well-executed acrobatic moves, knocks some of them out and throws them against the wall. Rajasena orders everyone to attack, and his spears are thrown at the wizard, 
who easily catches them by hand and returns the attack, he is surrounded. With a stunning aerial spin, he knocks out and defeats all of them. Rajasena, fearful, prepares to attack the wizard with an arrow, but without success, as the wizard's strength and vitality come from black magic. He counters and decapitates Rajasena. The wizard, with his malevolent power, seizes the power of the emperor and becomes one. Meanwhile, Tian trains, and once again Han brings a visitor, this time a guard of the new emperor, who tells him to surrender. Soon, many other guards attack Tian, but now with his spirit and body healthy again, he fights wisely and defeats the first attackers. The crazy Han, thinking Tian was playing when he grabbed a rope, accidentally helps Tian defeat the last guard. Suspecting the danger that the village and Pim were facing, he rushes to her, but upon arrival, he finds everything destroyed and many killed. A guard attacks him by surprise, but Tian dodges and defeats him, and when the others come to attack, he doesn't hesitate to fight the guards of the wizard emperor, dodging their swords and quickly overpowering and finishing them all. Inspired and with a new purpose, he no longer has anger and now fights for a destiny of light without darkness dominating him. In the next scene, we see the villagers who were captured and are now slaves forced to do heavy work, with many unable to endure and dying. Pim is among them, frightened, trying to hide, but while watching what the guards are doing, she notices they are mistreating an elephant, the animal Tian loved most. Still scared, she hears someone approaching and shouting to free his people. Everyone stops working and sees it's Tian, who, attracting the wizard's attention, goes to him and says he will destroy him. However, the wizard, possessing the power of evil within him, says he cannot be killed. He also says that even the sky obeys him, and using some kind of illusory magic, he darkens the sky, making people very afraid. Knowing the connection between Tian and Pim, the wizard unfortunately kills her, making Tian even more eager to destroy such evil, but with fury dominating him. The guards, not realizing who Tian is, attack him. One of them loses an ear, and with much fury, Tian begins to fight the many soldiers of the wizard, surprising them by jumping on the elephant, and with powerful punches, breaks their armor. Seeing that they use elephants as weapons, he becomes even more furious, ferociously defeating anyone who comes at him. Using one of the animals, Tian knocks down a soldier and then, with a beautiful knee in the air, knocks down the man guiding the animal. Tian then knocks down some of them by jumping over the animals and finishes more, and then with great strength and a spear, knocks down several of them and kills whoever faces him, as with much fury, he doesn't forgive the evil that exists and wants to destroy the lives of people he loves. Using sand to distract his opponents, he knocks out more of them and uses it to intimidate everyone, where he destroys his entire armor with his fists and gives many fatal punches to it. But it doesn't work, so when all at once come to kill Tian, an elephant positions itself and protects him, and with its help, Tian launches a large stone statue onto them. Seeing that the guards won't be enough, the wizard decides to end the fight and throws a spear into Tian's chest, piercing his body. The wizard declares that there is no one greater than him and thus ends Tian's life. However, before falling, Tian ironically laughs at him, which we soon discover is because Tian was actually in meditation, where everything he was about to do would lead to the end we just saw. Wisely, he stayed in his place and did not give in to the anger in his heart, where, fortunately, Pim was still alive. She then appears there, and a power emerges, striking the wizard, also making the sky return to normal and all the guards break free from the enchantment of evil, as they were all being manipulated. Waking up after being hit, the wizard stands up, and the evil within his body begins to be destroyed by the light emanating from the sky. His tattoos start to fade away, and with that, he becomes a normal man again, reminding us of what the blind master said when Tian was still a boy, that even the spirits would fear his hands. Tian approaches the wizard, who, no longer immortal, is furious and immediately attacks Tian. Now with inner peace, Tian fights calmly and easily dodges his attacks. Using defense as an attack, Tian proves superior, even demonstrating his skill by touching the face of his opponent, who furiously tries to defend himself, but Tian overpowers him and delivers a blow that makes him spin in the air and fall into the water. Tian soon enters the water, and the furious man tries to strike him, but it doesn't work, as Tian, showing great skill and calm, knocks him down again in the water. However, being persistent, he tries once more, and again Tian strikes him and throws him from a certain height. Confident, Tian approaches, but his opponent uses ashes to cloud his vision, gaining an advantage and managing to land two blows on Tian. 
The moment becomes tense, as the lunatic grabs a spear, the same one Tian saw in his meditation, and throws it at him. To the wizard's surprise, Tian incredibly catches the spear before it pierces his neck, suffering only injured hands. Enraged, the wizard launches another attack, and Tian, with his tranquility and skill in his fighting style, grabs his opponent by the chin and lifts him into the air, then lets him fall, where he lands on one of the large tusks of the elephant, dying instantly. After this evil is destroyed, Tian, relieved along with the rest of his people, returns to the devastated village and to their origins, where from then on they will build a new life and a future of peace.